Welcome to Ryoto, Japan. Did you know that three quarters of Japanese land is all mountains? So today I've been asked to join this amazing, extraordinary trekking tour that goes for three days to see the best sunrise in all of Japan. And it's better than Mount Fuji. Let's go. Mount Haku or Hakusan is known as one of Japan's three holy mountains alongside with Mount Fuji and Mount Tateyama. But what makes them holy? Well, just like Mount Fuji, Mount Haku is a volcano, so it has a massive hole where the lava comes out. Get it? Holy. <laughs> okay, fine. To understand what makes Mount Haku so special, we are first going to have to learn about a little thing called Shintoism. Shinto is Japan's native religion and teaches that all things, creatures, and even forces of nature are inhabited by gods known as Kami. See the building over there? That's a Kami. Oh, that dog? Kami. A rainy afternoon studying to lo fi hip hop beats? That's inexplicably very relaxing, actually. But also, Kami. And so, if everything in and outside of nature is the home to a Kami, then what could be more spiritual than this big ass mountain? Nothing. That's what. And so, mountains, as a powerful symbol of nature, we are considered by many to be sacred places that are inhabited by the most important of Kami. And when those mountains start spitting out lava and fire, that's when you know the local Kami is pissed. Starting to understand how Shinto works a bit now? But how do you please an angry Kami and show you don't deserve a good pumping? Well, that's easy. Climb to the top and thank the gods. Very simple. And that's exactly what we'll be doing this trip. This tour was designed as an offering to the gods, known in Japanese as Hono Sai, an offering ceremony. Which is why the first day consists of visiting the Shiroyama Shrine, so the local Miko or Shrine Maidens can bless those about to climb for a safe journey. After being blessed, however, there was another way that we were required to show appreciation to the gods. So here I am up on the mountains and look at this stage. They just built this stage just for the no performance. So the no performance will be dedicated to the mountains, uh, to thank mountains, because, because this is going to be a part of the uh, offering festivals. Uh, normally, the no performance will be done uh, to the audience, but instead today, they're going to face the mountains uh, again to thank the gods of mountains. Traditionally, no theater also has its roots in Shintoism. And he said that the first ever no performance was performed by a spirit of a shrine dancing in a human form. So, next time you're out on Friday night and see someone dancing on the street at 2 a.m., that could be your start of a new form of Shinto theater. No is almost like a very structured song and dance. It's almost hypnotic to watch as the actors move slowly across the stage. Their small movements are meant to indicate the changes in feelings. And no masks are even designed to change expression depending on whether they are pointing up or down. Happy no, sad no. Happy no, sad no. You think regular no is already hard to understand. And just imagine watching it backwards. Now we've finally given our proper offerings to the Kami. In theory, they should give us a good sunrise tomorrow. Right Kami? We are cool, right? But since this is a 2,702 meter climb, we have to head off early in the morning if we want to catch a sunrise. So it's 6 o'clock and we're about to uh, start climbing to the Hakusan. Today uh, we are not going up to the peak yet. First of all, we are going to the mountain hut, uh, which is about 2,450 meters, it's quite high up there. And then tomorrow morning, uh, we are uh, going to the peak, which is 2,702 meters, where we're going to see the best sunrise in all of Japan. First of all, we need to start with some important taiso, or stretches, and then we are off. That's a bit scary, isn't it? I'm ready, energized, and ready to tackle this monster of a mountain. For someone like Chris, this will be a challenge, but for me, it's been only 15 minutes. That's, that's already hard. <laughs> Some people are still like down there, but I tell you again, it's only 15 minutes spin. <laughs> Why did I agree to this? As we make our way through what can only be described as the world's rockiest and steepest forest, I begin to realize that this is no walk in the park, but at least we are being blessed by good weather. So now we uh, got the second the break point. And look at that, 
the sunrise. You know, sun is great, but uh, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get hot, <laughs> for sure. I'm worried about that. Let's go, let's go. See, all that dedicated no to the gods was worth it. A part of this tour is also run by the Sumo Association because Sumo has a very deep connection with Shintoism too. For example, the salt that Sumo wrestlers throw at the start of the match is a Shinto tradition meant to ward away evil spirits. And so today, an ex-Sumo wrestler is also joining the climb. Maybe I shouldn't be complaining. Imagine climbing a mountain but weighing over 100 kilos. <clears throat> I guess it's not so bad. I mean, we're making friends. Just call me Snow White. I can speak with animals. And that really is the best thing about hiking in Japan. A lot of people, when they visit here, end up going to places like Tokyo and Osaka, which, don't get me wrong, are lovely. But you can really appreciate just how different the natural side of Japan is when you take a moment to step outside of the big cities. I mean, look at this view. This looks like f***ing Switzerland. This is the real Japan. I mean, the real Japan is in Switzerland, but you get what I mean. It's beautiful. It's majestic. It's bloody tiring. I'm already exhausted. <laughs> so right now, according to my watch, it's now altitude is 1,000, 1,961. So we are almost at 2,000 meters. So the, the mountain height we actually trying to reach is 2,450. So we got about, about 500 meters to go. I don't know if I can reach it, make it, but I'll try. But you know, apparently the water here is pretty uh, refreshing, really cold. So I tried to refill my bottle here and uh, that would actually help me reach the top. See you later. After about three or so hours of climbing, things are starting to look a little dire. My legs ache. The sun is blaring down on us. But luckily, a hero has made his way up the mountain to guide us. In Japanese folklore, it's said that lost travelers who climb mountains will be guided by the kami known as harmonica man. Uh, uh, maybe I just made that up. But every group who climbed the mountain is given the professional climbing guide, and our guide just so happened to have a harmonica, which he used to help motivate us to keep going. I just thought that was cool. Anyway, we are getting closer to the mountain hut where we're going to stay the night. And during a quick breather, I decided to ask my friend Takashihon-san, who also happened to be running this event, just why he decided to torture me. Uh, I mean, run such a marvelous tour. So Takashihon-san, why did you start this tour? Well, it's a lot of nature, and it's a lot of nature. Now it's a lot of nature. あの、重要視されてて、ま、その論理の上に成り立つ自分の欲求とかが組み合わさることで、ま、対立が起こりがちな世の中なので、もうちょっと昔の文化を触れることができたら、そこから逃れられる可能性が高いので、そういうちょっ
and a house where I can get some drinks, maybe curry rice. I don't know, I'm just so hungry right now. Oh, but I, I'm making it. I'm making it, barely making it. It's kind of, ah. So this is our destination for today. And then I'm gonna, we're gonna sleep here tonight and then try to reach the peak tomorrow morning. So let's get inside, let's go. The top of Hakusen actually has a quite a large mountain hut, especially compared to the smaller huts, Oyamagoya on Mount Fuji. I was surprised at just how nice this place was. And we even got our own little private bunk beds. They have private rooms with showers. They also serve cold drinks, ramen and beers, and they have clean toilets, everything. Shame we won't get to enjoy for long, because tomorrow, in order to see the sunrise, we need to wake up at 3 a.m. Thanks, Takashi Hosan. Bloody nature. Why can it be majestic and beautiful after 8 a.m.? But before we go to bed, things are starting to look a little bit suspicious weather-wise. So we are supposed to be able to see the sunset right behind me, uh, but as you see, it's really cloudy. And actually, it was raining um, until like 10 minutes ago. And, uh, and additionally, uh, we got about 50, 50 chance uh, for tomorrow uh, to see the, the sunrise as well. So, uh, uh, wish me luck. So, um, it's 3.30. <laughs> I can't believe I'm awake this time. Um, so we're about to uh, climb up to a peak now. And, uh, and I just see the people with like all the headlights and I'm wearing one as well. And uh, it's the first time I was doing something like this. I'm really excited. All right, so uh, let's go. And I thought climbing Haksa in the day was hard, but climbing at night is a whole different experience. Well, actually it's a very similar experience, except I keep falling over in the dark. Oops. <sighs> now we are at 2,608 meters high, and uh, we're about to uh, get up there in about, I think, half an hour. The peak again is 2,702, so we've got about 100 meters uh, left to go. Uh, my mates are all exhausted, so am I. We've been already walking for like, how, how long now? Uh, something like, well, 20 minutes, but yeah, maybe more exercise needed in the beginning. As we get closer to the summit though, I hear something a little unusual. What is this? I hear something. Let's find out. It's, it's bloody, what, 4.30 in the morning? Must be the kami. We make it to the summit of the mountain at about 4.30. It's just before sunrise and things are looking bleak. The weather on the top of the mountain can change suddenly and the clouds are now engulfing the peak. Come on, Kami, we pray to you and everything. Everyone is nervously waiting. Will the clouds move? Will I ever see the sun again? And then suddenly, as if by miracle, my cameraman shines an orange light on my face so that we can fake it just in case. But then, a few seconds after that, a little ray of sunshine. Here come the sun, do 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 do. Sure, it's not the sunshine I was hoping for, but honestly, being up here out in nature makes it all worth it. The cold and a crisp morning air, being surrounded by the people we've met climbing up the mountain. The opera singer. Wait, what? Did I also mention that this tour comes with a professional opera singer who gave us a rendition of the Japanese national anthem just as the sun rises? She even climbed up with us yesterday. And as if by magic, the sound of her voice parted the clouds and we were greeted by a beautiful golden sky. Thank you, Kami. I guess you're all right after all. No more worshipping Satan for me. As we climb down the mountain, once again, be motivated by the harmonica man. We were greeted by some beautiful views. Just take a look at these shots.
at about one hour of hitting my knees make this noise. We are finally done! About six hours up and four hours down. A beautiful sunrise with the Japanese opera singer. And some of the most beautiful scenery that Japan has to offer. Not bad at all, I must say. Like Takashiho san mentioned, the point of this tour is to take a little bit of time to do something that doesn't make sense. Forget your worries in modern life and connect with nature. And that's what Shintoism is all about connecting with the kami that are part of everything. Shintoism is connected to almost everything in Japanese culture. We also visit shrines throughout the year and bow when we greet the kami at the gates. But we don't really think about what it means to us. And this trip lets you feel Shintoism. It feels a lot like muscle pain. Sometimes you need to just take a moment and realize there are some things more important than your job your stress, your anxiety, things like harmonica man. So that was it for the video. So what did you think of the whole collaboration of this tour? It's the no performance and also the extra trekking to Mount Hakusan, 2,702 meters. What did you think of that? So, uh, Takashiro-san, mm. is this happening again next yes, year? Yes. When? And uh, August or July. August, July. Mm. August or July next year. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there any message to the world, please? Keizoku Alright, so uh, if anyone uh, just saw this video, uh, who is interested in they can participate in this program next year, check out the link in the description box below and uh, I might see you in next year. And I'll see you next video, okay? And I'll see you in next video. video. And if you'd like to participate in this tour yourself, check the link in the description box below. The next tour will happen in July or August of next year. So, if you want to experience Hakusan for yourself when you're in Japan, make sure to check it out. Thanks for watching, guys! I made it!